Welcome back to episode 23 in the Youthful Revolution series, Futuring Immortal DC. The fifth season is on the way and we need to take a look at the top three important matches that I have played since the last time. Today we are going to start with a bit of a side note here because I have changed a skin again. Actually to a skin that I have never tried before but I've played with it for a couple of games now and I really like it and I will talk more about it or a couple of things that I really like about this skin in the this episode but anyway we have our first game here or at least my third most important game how i see it a 5-0 victory against isteral di amodara who is ninth in the league our first goal well it's only our goals in this one is a counter-attack where jürgensen is picking up the silver he's just got yeah, he's just gonna run all the way through and score a goal here lovely second one is a new player called tanganglia who is gonna score this one from a bit of a missed opportunity on the corner. But we are picking it up with Pinguinhar, who is gonna cross it in, and there he is, the new guy. And the new guy is also gonna score the next one, and we also, as you can see here, we also got a new goalkeeper, so surprise, surprise about that. We will take a look at them after, of course, all these top three important matches. But here we go, Tenganglia is picking it up pretty deep here, and then he's putting it out to Frayo, who is gonna cross it in, and yeah, that was a missed opportunity, but he's getting it back again. And Pinto is picking it up in the midfield over to Pinguinhar. And same deal again. Same assist maker. From assist maker to goal scorer. This time around it's going to be Pinguinhar getting a goal right here. Lovely goal by him. Last but not least, we also got a goal here for, well, it's going to be Mbalo. But it's going to take a while before it's getting there. Because Saulo is, you know, making a mess out here. And then he's getting it into Mbalo, who is going to hit it in. Not only is this the biggest win of the season so far, this is also by far far the biggest performance or best performance overall massive game by our new player who we're gonna look at later on also very good game by Birotti who is also a new guy in the goal there is so many good things about this but Pinguinhar of course 9.8 here with one goal two assists and also three key passes absolutely fantastic game second most important game and also maybe the most surprising result of them all as we win 3-0 at home against tnd who is currently sitting number two in the league 11 minutes in and our new guy is getting his i don't know how many goals he've scored but again pininguar with the assist tinaklia with the goal and he also do get the second goal tinaklia well <laughs> that's the fourth goal you're gonna see by someone you don't know who is but he's very good in front of goal as you can see the third goal goal is actually Penguinhar who is gonna get a goal here from a header. So I did say that the last performance was the best performance of the league but this one might have it beaten to be honest. This might be the best one because we're playing someone who has been extremely good in the season so far. TND is number two in the league and they were really really good and I had no idea. I thought I, I went in with the mentality in this game. Okay we're gonna go in and lose 4-0. We didn't. We won 3-0. And our new guy with two goals, again being play of the match here, fantastic. But the most important game so far this season is against Benafiel, who is 17th in the league right now. This is a 4-2 loss away from home. Not great. We managed to get the first goal by Tinaklier from a corner. That's pretty good. And we did also get the second one from a penalty. Who is Jürgensen is going to take. So we were 2-0 up. And then it all went downhill. So here is their first goal after 46 minutes. So just after the first half. Um, right into the second half. They're going to get a pretty good shot off here. Well, actually, no. It's a, this is not the shot. <laughs> but yeah, it's, still, it's still a good goal by them. And this is going to be the second one. They were really pressuring us back here. We have our high line but we are just getting caught out of position and they do get the second one there third one is even worse well which you can see here it's actually an own goal the last one is also gonna be a set piece goal but at this stage it was pretty much already over yeah there we go of course there is positives to be said about that game but for the most part conceding four games or four goals is definitely not one of them what I do want to say is that we did play our backup goalkeeper here, Andre Lopez, who didn't really do too well in this one, to be honest. 6.2, awful, but that's probably not why we lost it. I think tactically I might have gotten this one slightly wrong, but then again, 2.17 XG, 
1.90 XG for them. We shouldn't lose it by 4-2. Absolutely not. The full schedule since the last time is 12 games, including two cup games, five wins, three draws, and four losses. And we got unlucky in the cup again. We got Porto in, in that third round. I don't, last year it was Sporting, I think it was. So yeah, not lucky about that. But also, I yeah we, it was dreadful we we did win uh, sorry it's actually not 12 games it's 11 games because we did play Firenze I forgot about that so it's only 11 games actually we have played not a great you can you can tell that right here I was definitely struggling the first six or seven games after the last episode I was struggling quite a lot we had one win here that big win against uh, Estrella but after that oh man SLB beneficial that, that was a really terrible game also Balanesesi year three three not a good result things were just not going my way it was just it wasn't because we were playing really bad it's just i wouldn't say murphy's law because that's not true not everything went against us it's just we just didn't get you know we were just not lucky right we were just not lucky we were unlucky uh, so um i kind of changed things down here and in the last four games we played a little bit different in a not a different formation or anything but just a slight couple of different changes that we will go through later on and it definitely paid out with a couple of more points being picked up here and some really good results also this one don't don't this is also a big game this is also a big game i just didn't have room for uh, more in my top three but that's also a massive game for one win against Nacional Di maria and i think they are fifth yeah they're fifth in the league so a uh, very big game as well gnd of course the biggest one because they're second uh, they might have been first at some stage, so yeah, uh, some pretty good games here near the end, but definitely not the way we wanted to start this season. So we are currently sitting 11th in the league with 16 points, which is, I mean, I, I mean, the board is expecting top half, and from the media prediction, they were predicting us five maybe the expectations was a little bit too high for this season we could still get there don't get me wrong we could still get there but i think we need to be realistic here because some of these teams up here are not easy to play against even the bottom teams are not easy to play against sometimes apparently um it's definitely harder than what it looks like so i i, I, st I still expect us to be around probably seventh or maybe eighth or something like that but uh, yeah, it's it, it's been a tough uh, tough season so far. We we have been we've been sitting a, a quite low for a while here, and then uh, we got back into yeah kind of. I mean we were really low here to begin with, 14th, 15th, but we thankfully got up to 11th now, which is acceptable for now at least as long as we're keeping away from the relegation zone i'm fairly happy so let's talk about why we got a new goalkeeper and also a new striker well the striker is more yeah we'll we'll talk about but the goalkeeper roberto paulo roberto he did leave us how much did we get and last transfer fee 300k so we got 300 000 for him that is pretty sweet now you can probably already now tell why i well in, to some extent changed to this skin because we do have the pizza pie here we have the custom dna this screen is definitely better than the other two skins that i have used previously but there is more to it than that this is just one thing that is positive compared to the other two but roberto out right he's out so um we are not gonna see him anymore unfortunately he did really well for us and honestly maybe the new goalkeeper haven't been quite as good as roberto but uh, let's take a look at the new goalkeeper then. And here he is. He is called Ugo Birotti and he is an Italian, 19 years old, and he is on 1,000 wages. Absolutely massive wage. Might be too much. It might be too much. I also paid 140k for him. He was definitely the best goalkeeper I could get for a reasonable price, I would say. So <laughs> I could probably get someone else that was even better, but yeah um i decided to go with this one and um so far let's actually see if we can see the picture chart here with goalkeeping progressive passes he's very progressive in passes passes completed is also half decent possession lost is not good possession one five one is this really goalkeeping so clean sheets he's, he's not looking he's not looking good in the goalkeeping as he expected the goals prevented minus nine uh, minus 0 0.29 but it might not be only his fault but yeah, goal conceded 1.67. It doesn't look good. Uh, let's try and compare him to uh, Paolo Roberto here. I think he is an upgrade. Overall, he might be an upgrade, uh, especially in a year or two. I think he would be an upgrade. Uh, I think he has a higher ceiling than Roberto did. 
buddy. I'm a little bit worried about this one uh, because I did pay quite a sum for him and the wages is also extremely high. But hopefully he's going to come good for us because he got he got some pretty decent stats. Like the balance is 16, jumping reach of 15, aerial reach of 15. Um, where is his, uh, not off the ball, positioning is 11, which is fine. And he also got the reflexes of 14, which is kind of the stats I'm looking for mostly about goalkeeping. Uh, I, I would not see, I would not call him more of a sweeper keeper. I will actually call him a goalkeeper more so because he doesn't really have the first touch of passing or yeah, stuff like that. So I think he's more just a straight up goalkeeper. But right now we are using him as a sweeper keeper because that's the only thing we can play. So <laughs> yeah, uh, but next season he's probably going to go back to goalkeeping. But I mean... Maybe he's gonna become good, maybe not, we'll see. And the other signing is Luca Tanaklier, and he is also an interesting one. Um, striker, well, maybe even more winger than striker, but uh, yeah, he is mostly played as an, actually only played as an advanced forward so far. He's only played five games, but he scored five goals. Well, five and, a, and two from subs. Five goals, 3.60 in XG, pretty good, as we see over here, and that is actually the striker roles. It seems pretty good, and if this this whole picture chart is taking the top 20 leagues expected as a percentile, and we are like I think we are 46 or 42 or something like that in terms of where our league is. So this is way th this chart is way above in you know the percentile that than what you would see for a player like this, um, because we are not in top 20 leagues, right? We are in top 40 something leagues. <laughs> in Portugal too so yeah it's uh, it's pretty good he, he's definitely scoring goals his shots is maybe a little bit low um he, he's not taking too many shots but they seem to be on target hit us one yeah no, yeah yeah he's not gonna win he's not gonna win anything in the air but that's okay uh pressure attempts is really really high and that's one of the reasons I got this guy because his stamina and work rate is up there so he's also a very decent pressing forward I am playing him as advanced for now but we are actually our, one of the tactical changes is actually we went from a target forward to a pressing forward, but I'll uh, I'll come in that that will come later, right? But he's playing the advanced forward for the most part. Possession one is really good. Possession lost is very good. He's not losing the ball, probably because he's pretty good at dribbling and maybe also, or I don't know, I don't know why he's not losing the ball that often. Probably just because he got a bit of vision, he got a got a bit of passing, so he's just not he's just passing it either back to someone or finding his pass forward. So yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, this whole thing looks very, very good for a new player. He also fits completely the custom DNA. The custom DNA is actually all the six DNA that we are using. Determination, teamwork, work rate, acceleration, pace, and stamina. So we can actually see exactly how they are here on the custom DNA in terms of what we would like to see. So overall, I think this was a uh, pretty good transfer. 125K, he is well already now worth 600k i have actually set asking prices for all of our players because we're gonna sell and buy quite a lot and um yeah i was getting annoyed by people coming in with low bowling kind of so i just said transfer targets for everyone uh, and and of course i need to adjust it for maybe every month or every two months or something like that especially before a transfer window opens i need to adjust it but 600k that's probably also fairly low i think he's worth probably already now around a million so um yeah i think it's i think it's gonna be a good deal for us we also got two new staff members maybe the most interesting one is this guy pa uh, pablo dupko who got 20 in physio yes please i'll take him also an under 19th new coach here in Nuno Carrerier. Nothing special, just pretty good at working with youngsters and a bit of discipline and motivation. So just one more to the fold. A little bit going on in the board news as well. We do have actually just about now, we actually got improved training facilities accepted. Yes, in five months, we are gonna have new training facilities. That's gonna be a big deal. I also tried it earlier on, but we didn't get it. We got it rejected. I'm actually not going in for too much so far this season. Only a couple of staff allowed, physio allowed. That's the two guys you saw come in. And also a bit of increase in code wages for later use and also assistant manager. But not a whole lot is going on in here. But the good thing is, it seems like they're pretty happy with what's going on right now on and off the pitch. So uh, can't really complain too much about that. Supporters, how are they doing? I actually haven't reserving judgment. Uh, get a bit of 
get the bit oh okay we haven't played them so it doesn't really matter the rivals but otherwise it seems like they're doing okay as well with us not being too high in the league so the finances just took a massive hit i think we had almost two million in the bank actually so we are actually going we we are we're spending more than we are you or we are gaining right now but yeah the balance has gone down because of those training facilities getting upgraded like that's probably costing around two million so uh, but overall we can still be fairly happy with our, you know, we're probably going to go into around 900 or maybe a million in minus at the end of this season, but we are going to get it back in sponsor deals and then we have the new training facilities next season. One of the main reasons I came back right now around 4th of December here is because I could also do it a couple of days later, I suppose, but in this month we have something we need to decide because if, if you look over here, we got expiring dates. This is expiring in the summer. We got how many players? That is 24 of our players that is going to be expiring in the summer. We need to figure out who we're going to keep and who we're going to resign uh, on a new contract before the end of this month. So that's why I'm doing it now. And what I also said in the last episode is we probably want to look at our spreadsheet again now when we have a lot more statistics to, to look at to get a get a get a probably a little bit of a better feeling of what we need to do with some of our players in the future because we do need to figure it out i mean there is a couple of ways i can figure out what to do with them one of them is of course how they are performing also how old they are and also how much they have been progressing throughout because if they stop progressing that's probably where we probably want to sell them Otherwise, unless they are a first 11 player, then we probably want to keep them and give them a new contract therefore. But I think most of these guys, probably around 20 of these, I probably want to sign them again because money, right? Money. Oh yeah, things have definitely changed over here in the spreadsheet. I actually haven't looked at it before now, so it's kind of interesting to see what's going on here. And um, I don't think I'm gonna, you know, spend too much time here. Maximum five minutes. <laughs> Maximum five minutes. Because, yeah, there is a lot to do in this episode. And um, we also got two games to play, of course. Um, so up front, Jurgensen is... Yeah, he's in there. He, his contract is not running out, so that's not a problem. Imbalo's contract is running out. He's been playing on the left-hand side, and he has actually been performing quite well. I would say any anything above 1.5 in difference here, that's pretty good compared to their average uh, attribute here, and then total. Anything above that is, is probably a pretty good number for them. So yeah, he, he's definitely someone we want to sign again if we can. Uh, Paula is already, he already have signed. He's the only one that actually have signed a new deal for four years, right? 31. For four years, we're going to have him on 300 uh, wages. But he might be, we might end up selling him at some stage. But he, absolutely fantastic to get him for four years. Uh, I think there's going to be a good profit in him. I think his value right now is 1.3 million. So yeah, go figure. Galbert has been fairly good. He's been fairly good as the third option. Um, of course, now when we do have uh, ten, uh, Teniglia, he's going to be fourth choice Galbert. So, but he's been performing okay. He's got a couple of goals and stuff. But yeah, Teniglia over here is not a winger. He's, he's, I mean, he could play as an AMR, but we are using him as a striker. So yeah, he's also been doing okay, but he can definitely step it up one more, I, I would say. I, I expect him to do that. The more games he's gonna get, the better he's probably gonna become. So that's pretty good. On the AML, the silver is... It's, I don't even know what to say about him. Um, I mean, he's the loan deal, right? And he, he have two red cards and he's very inconsistent. But sometimes he's just popping up with crazy stuff in the games. Um, so he's very inconsistent, but yeah. Sambo is out on loan, on Meteor is out on loan. Shavald is probably gonna be sold. So we don't really have a lot out here. Um, we do have uh, uh, Hugo who's been doing okay when he's playing. He got like one plus one in difference here. So he's doing okay. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about him actually. And in the midfield or more so in the midfield rights here, we don't, all these guys, I think actually both are actually already sold. I think they're just not gonna go before the winter transfer is opening. But yeah, I don't think they're gonna be around anyway. Well, maybe, maybe Suarez, maybe Suarez. I can't remember, but anyway. In the midfield, well, well, midfield right here, we do have Saulu who have, who have been performing really well. He, him and also Pinguinher has been really good. It doesn't look like it here, but he's actually been performing quite well, Pinguinher. 8.81 is kind of high for him. So I'm very happy about that. And definitely also Saulu performing quite well with 9.48. He's doing really good. And probably Gonsalves, who I thought would be the starter. He's kind of third choice right now. <laughs> Funny enough. That's how it goes. That's just how it goes. So, yeah. Um, in the defensive midfield, we have... Well, 
the Volante, who has changed to a Volante on support rather than attack. Otavio and Enrique have mostly been playing there. Um, and I would say Vieira. Vieira is not even on the list. He's probably down here somewhere on the fifth spot. So Otavio and Enrique is the Volante right now. But actually, at the moment, what I've done is playing Pinto as the defensive midfielder because he's performing really well. And the other side is Marcelinho, who has been playing as a Volante, a little bit more than Otavio at the moment, because he's way more defensive and I guess having more defensive minded defensive midfielders makes sense. So yeah, I mean, he's probably not performing as high as I would have expected from a type of player of him, but can't really complain too much about our defensive midfield. It seems fine, especially Pinto here. He's probably the best. He, he, I think he is the best player at the club right now. So um, pretty happy with him. Uh, he still got a one year contract, so no worries there. Fullbacks, well, I can, I am not, I'm unsure about Regis. Um, Regis, he kind of wants to go out on loan or he probably wants to leave or something. Like, maybe we, we could sell him. We could sell him this, this window, but I don't like selling them going into a window where the next window, someone can pick him up like on a free. So either we give him a new contract or we really push hard to sell him. That, that's the two options we have right now. Hopefully he will take a new contract because I think he's good enough to get a new contract. He's been more, mostly a substitute, but he's actually done quite well as a substitute. Hopfer, well, I do hope he's gonna sign a new contract because when he came back from his injury, he's been perfect. Yeah, uh, no worry. I mean, our captain, hopefully he's gonna stay. That's, <laughs> I would really hate to see him go. That would be annoying. Um, but that would be really bad. So yeah, that's pretty good. Um, we also have Hill who has played one game. You know, whatever. Yeah, but oh yeah, his contract is not running out, so it doesn't really matter. Faiju, um, he's been quite good. The loan deal, uh, he's a loan deal, so but yeah, he's been probably the main guy over there. Uh, Vilhak was out a very long time with an injury and hasn't really hit form yet. He's he's still not quite there. I think he will get there, uh, you know, in a couple of games' time. So that's probably fine. And Arthur has been kind of the third option or second option in some cases. He's been doing okay. He actually got two games up here as well when we needed it because we had so many injuries and stuff going on on the left-hand side. So Arthur has actually played a little bit up there. So I can't really blame him for only having, well, it's, a, it's, it's actually one over than what it should be. So he, he, he's probably doing fine in there. Pinheiro, unsure if we are gonna keep him. I don't think I wanna resign him. But then again, just giving him a contract on two years and then maybe sell him in the summer instead could be a thing because I don't want to give them away for free, right? I don't want to give them away for free if I can get money for them. That's the whole idea here. We want to probably re-sign players that we want to sell, <laughs> so to speak. Central defenders? I think Reis is probably the one doing the best here. And he's he's having a pretty long contract, so that's good. He actually signed a new contract as well, I think, earlier on. So pretty good, pretty good there. Socrates Silva, and he's a youngster that seems to be very close to getting into the first team now. And yeah, his contract is running out. So I definitely want to give him a new contract as well, if I can, because he's performing quite well. So probably so. Tessa or Tressa, I've been a little bit disappointed with him, uh, especially on 800 wages. I don't think he has performed as well. It, it seems to happen every single time we get a central defender on high wages. They just don't perform. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Igor is out on loan. So I, I have the loan deals in here as well. So like, Camara is also out on loan. So we can see the loan deals, how they perform as well out on their loans. So Igor is actually out on loan and doing quite well. That's good to see. But uh, fourth choice, uh, I don't even remember who the fourth choice is here. Let's check up on that. Uh, that would be, uh, oh, Inikai Rodriguez, right? Rodriguez. And also, yeah, we don't really have anyone else there uh, in terms of purely central defenders. But who has played there a couple of times is like Faiju and also Rikis have played in the central defense a couple of times, but mostly it's Reis and Tressa. Basically, all games is Reis and Tressa. And then sometimes Stroka Tress Silver, and sometimes. Why is he not on this list? Why is. Why is uh, Rodriguez not in here? That is very strange. He should be. Oh, he's only 8.58, so he actually didn't do too well, Rodriguez. That's why he's not on the list. His total score is a bit lower, but his average attribute is higher. That's why yeah, I'm, I'm ordering it by average attribute in here. So, yeah, uh, Igor is actually doing quite well out on loan. That's good to see. And in goal, well, I don't think the goal keeping stats is all that. It's yeah, it's it's hard to tell because it's like this, the way the statistics are working in here is basically mostly attributes that got to do with you know the outfield kind of situation. So that statistics probably is not that important. But yeah, 
Hiroji, Diodano, and Lopez has probably been the second choice. Hasn't been too good. Diodano is out on loan, and so is Santos. He's also out on loan. Not the greatest goalkeepers there, but and Lopez, he didn't look good when he actually played, but he do have a longer contract, so it's fine. Um, he's a fine backup, uh, but he didn't look too good in that one or two games that he did play, so might not be good enough as a backup next season, but he might be good enough this season. But anyway, that is the spreadsheet. I think that was more than five minutes, but hey, I can't, I can't help myself. All right, so back in the game, and I have already done all of the business. It took like 20 minutes because that was a lot of contracts. So yeah, the good thing here is pretty much everyone took their contract and it's gonna be good contracts for us. Some of them are even going lower than what they were, but probably on average like 240 or something like that in wages. And some of them also got extensions on, so it's gonna be good. So there was only like four guys, uh, Riviere, Regis and Mateus, who is transfer listed, who didn't take a contract. Um, and also another guy that is in between the A team and the B team, you know, that thing where you have to move one day ahead before you can see the guy again in your <laughs> in your squad. Really strange. And also a couple of guys in, um, in, in next year's contract negotiations, I've already decided like Lopez, Chavald, Moraes and Santas here. They are also going to be transfer listed. So maybe we can sell them already here in the winter transfer. We'll see. Maybe, maybe someone is coming in for them. Maybe not. Um, now, why did I do this? Now, you might sit there thinking, why are you doing, why are you do, why did you do that? Think about it. Think about it for a second in terms of price tag, right? The wages, if you, if you add up all of these wages for just one year, how much is that? I don't know, but it's probably less than any of these transfer values that I can sell them for, right? I can, if I just sell one of these guys that I just gave a contract to, I can probably make up that wage i could probably make up that money in wages for just one guy sold right if i if i sell two that's already double the profit right so it's not even it's not even a question of if it's a good idea to do or not and here's the thing other thing all of these guys are young they're still going to develop slightly some of them less than other ones but they're only only going to increase in value right they're going to only going to increase in value so it's 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 definitely good and of course someone like Hopfer we definitely want to keep him and he's going to give he's going to get a four year contract and a one year contract extension as well for us uh, if we want to trigger it so perfect right everything was perfect here i would say but now to something a little bit more important the next game that we are going to play Tolfrense eighth in the league and uh, we're looking at the scout report here it looks like they're going to be playing a 4-3-3 with wing backs and wingers as well so probably going to be a wide formation but we can check that out later on so uh strengths a defensive near post set piece first contact i mean we are not scoring goals on set pieces anyway or at least we're not scoring goals on the near post i mean i'm still trying to do it but it, it just doesn't work <laughs> Sits, oh, they're also good on set piece chance creation, good defense, good midfield. Okay, so they got a couple of good players in there. Kicking, reflex, flare, punching, through balls. How many? Seven out of 23 from through balls. I mean, that's not good for us, but hey, it is what it is. Bravery, aggression, formation, faced 4 for 2. They don't like a 4 for 2, apparently. Uh, anything else here? Concentration, formation, faced 4 for 2 again. Passing, teamwork, work rate, and then a lot in the orange. It doesn't look like a good team in terms of this over here, but I, yeah, we shouldn't underestimate these guys. They are eighth in the league, right? The data up suggests that they are probably going to be playing a gigan press. I don't know why this over here is not showing, but probably a gigan press. Average position with the ball. Yeah, it seems it seems pretty wide, and uh, yeah, we are away from home, so um, I, I would expect us to go in cautiously here because these teams, four three three kind of teams, going wide, they seem to be p pretty potent against us. So I'm a bit worried. What about without the ball? A little bit more narrow, but not really too narrow. So we probably don't want to play through the mid all that much, but we are probably going to try and do it anyway to begin with. There is a space right here, which is really good. This is really good because that is our inverted wing back, and that, that leaves space for the wing back out here if we have our inverted wing back in here. So that's actually quite enough good for how we are normally attacking very often. So I'm not too concerned about this, and our winger can dribble through over here as well. Uh, it's just that they don't go on the inside. That's probably not going to be good for us. So the only thing about this skin that is not really that great is probably the tactical screen here and also the tactical meeting thing. That's the only thing, but everything else I actually like a lot more. But there is a small bug where I can't actually hit the winger here for some reason. I can't move it or do anything. Well, I can move it, but I can't hit... Oh, there we go. Now it worked. But yeah, also just overall, it's not quite as good. But 
everything else in this skin is better than the other two that I used before, in my opinion right now. So a lot of the instructions have changed, right? The Volante here have changed the slightly to a support. The wingers have, they are not cutting inside. The inverted winger is not holding up the ball more anymore. The inverted wing bag is not taking any more risk. The wing bag is not taking any more risk. So I have changed a lot of the instructions on many of the roles to be a little bit more simplistic and also going a little bit more support in the midfield here while the pressing forward is a new role because before we used the target forward but now i'm trying to use the pressing forward also the inside forward was an attack before i'm also that guy on support now so we have three on attack four five on support and three on defense yeah and also we do have some changes in here as well because i'm going more passing di more direct now in passing directness i'm taking out dribble more or run a defense which is basically dribble more because we're not really good at dribbling. I mean, some of our guys are really good at dribbling, but most of them, I don't really want to dribble with them. So I'm actually taking that one out. And right now we are low crosses, but I, mixed crosses might be something I want to, you know, change to. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the changes. I don't think I've changed anything in here. Nah, nah, no changes in here. So quite a lot of changes actually. And that happened like four games ago or so. But uh, let's figure out who we're going to play in this one. It will be pretty much strongest 11. Beruti, Hopfer, Tressa, Reis, Vilhak, Pinto, Marcelinho, Piquinha, Da Silva, Jorgensen and Ten Tenaglia. That, I really have a hard time with his name, Tenaglia. <laughs> also Piquinha, that's also really hard for me. But yeah, pretty much strongest 11. Also a really good bench here. Uh, Andre Lopez, Rodriguez, Fajou, Regis, Enrique, Gonzalez, Hugo, Graubert and Paula. Yeah, I, I, I'm fairly comfortable with saying that probably some of the better players in our team that is both on the bench and also on the first 11. So uh, maybe Arthur should be in there. Nah, I think Arikis and Fajou should be fine in there. Yeah, I think that's about it. I think we are ready to go. I don't really see why we would change anything in here. Yeah, in here. I don't really see so at all. And if that was the case, I would actually do it in here in the team meeting which I don't really like. This is the only screen I really don't. This is the screen I really don't like in this one because you don't have the full screen, right? You only have this small screen, which is really annoying me because then you, you can't have as many statistics and stuff. Um, it's just not quite as good as the other skins. But what is better is in-game. The in-game match engine stuff is way better in this one. I'll show you why. Two minutes in and we get our first opportunity. Michelinho into Jorgensen in the, into Penquinher, who is taking advantage of a mistake and he gets his goal. 20 minutes in and of course the usual pause. Now they haven't had a highlight yet and that was only that one highlight where we got the goal. But so far so good. Um, can't really complain too much about being away from home and doing this. So this is why I, well, what, the main reason why I changed to this skin when I, I have never tried it before and I, and I went in here and I just saw how much more customizable this one was compared to many of the other ones. I think the only one other that I've seen that is this much customizable is the flute, flute skin, I think it's called. But this one is, I mean, it's more fluent in the way it's working. So this here, you can change it to anything, right? Anything that there is in the game, you can change it here. Any single of these, you can, you know, move them around however you want, right? However you want. The only thing I don't have here is basically what I got over here. I don't even have that in the other skin we used. This, the average position with the ball, right? And without the ball. That is a very useful tool to have when you are not in, you, you know, this I would normally only have if we were in the half time. Now I also have it after 20 minutes, right? So now we can go in and check out, okay, so average position with the ball, they are fairly wide as we kind of knew they would be. They're trying to play it out here. They can't get through. They're trying to play it out here, which they can. So that might be a worry for us. Uh, on the other hand, without the ball, they are very narrow. So us playing really, we, right now we are actually also very narrow in our way of approaching. As we can see with the ball, we are very narrow, but there's gonna be space out here wide. But we could even maybe take more advantage of this because then they are just very, very narrow. So if we were to play a little bit more wide, we might be able to find more opportunities. So I'm thinking that might be a thing, but it could also be dangerous to do because that would also leave us more wide without the ball, right? We would be more wide without the ball. That would leave space behind our uh, fullbacks because they would be wider out here. So when they get the ball and counter us, that would be space. So maybe not. I mean, so far, it looks like we are doing fine, so maybe we shouldn't do it, but that's definitely a thing we could do. And that's why I like this skin. 
I mean, that also the rest of this is also really good, right? The rest of it is also good. I can just set it up exactly how I want it. And what I also, I don't think I've ever seen that before in any other skins. This up here, the, the, this, uh, what's it called? The, the what's, I don't know what it's called, the banner, the banner where you see the score line. You can change it to, you know, league, the leagues, the real leagues, your Premier League. That is definitely the Premier League. So what we have it on here is the La Liga one, because we're in Portugal, so I guess La Liga is pretty close. But uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before, and it's kind of a nice little detail. Um, but there are many small details in all skins, and all skins have their pluses and minuses. This one is just the, the new one that I have never tried before, and I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I'm just very happy that there is a new skin that I have never tried before that is this good. You, of course, got the heat map and passing and all that. But it, all of them are basically Frankensteins, right? They are all Frankensteins, but which one have the, the one that is most fitting for your Frankenstein version of a skin, right? It's like, what is mostly working for you? And this one seems to be very close to perfect, in, except for maybe the tactic window. Everything else seems to be very, very good. Even the font. Even the fo I really like this font as well for some reason. But anyway... That's enough about the skin. Let's move on with the game. Six minutes later, we take advantage of a counter here. Jurgensen just placing it right into the feet of Tenaglier, and he is gonna get a goal. Lovely! And uh, that was half time. Um, they did not have a single highlight. Not a single one. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much a perfect half for me. And I am playing on key highlights right now, so... You know, no, no, comprehensive, sorry. Comprehensive, right? Uh, whoa, 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 no, no, no. No, no, don't do that. Okay, okay I, apparently I can't change it right now. I, I, I thought I actually just, I thought I actually instant matched it, but I, thankfully that didn't work. <laughs> I don't think I've ever hit that before. But yeah, I am playing on comprehensive. So uh, yeah, no highlights for them at all. Clear cut chances, uh, they had one. And I, apparently it wasn't a highlight. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. How can something be a clear cut chance and not a highlight? But anyway. <laughs> Pretty much the perfect high, uh, perfect half for us away from home against someone who is, what was it, 8th? I think they were 8th in the league. Pretty happy with that. Uh, could we get more chances? Maybe. Um, maybe we could. But I, can, I just can't really complain. We, get, we, we The chances we get is inside the box as well. So it's, it's, really, uh, it's really hard to complain too much here. Maybe a little bit more clinical would be nice. But there's not a whole lot I can really say about this game that would be... I, I don't really think we should change anything because they can't really do anything on the ball anyway. So we're just getting a couple of counters here and there and we're tuning it up. So it's their game to be created now. They need to go out and create something and we can just sit back and counter them. So it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Pinto on a free kick and uh, yeah, there we are. It's gonna go to VAR. We got pushed. Reis got pushed. And you know what? I already know this. It's gonna give us a penalty. Yep, I don't know what the outcome is. That is gonna be exciting to see. I guess, okay, there we go, there we go, all right. Who is it? Who is there? Who is in front of the goal? Jurgensen, all right, Jurgensen. Can you give us a goal? Yes, 3-0, it's done. I mean, I don't think they can come back from this. They haven't had a highlight yet. Pinguinher back to Marcelinho, and he's gonna go back to Hopfer, and he's gonna cross it over to Jurgensen, who is gonna head it in, 4-0. Um, yeah, safe to say that uh, we're gonna win this one. I would be, <laughs> I don't know how they can come back from this. They are still, still no highlights for them. They got one more chance in this half, but no highlights. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, that is very unusual. Our match momentum is going our way. I'm thinking we're just gonna make some subs here and take off whoever is in need of a bit of a break. Marcelinho, Enrique can come in. That's perfect. Hopfer, yeah, he's been doing... He's actually only on 6.8. Oh, I don't think the average rating has actually been kicking in after that assist because it's right after that goal. But he's coming off as well for... Regis, I think. I think Regis need a little bit more play time, actually. Silva, yeah, let's just bring out another one. Hugo, yeah, he hasn't played a lot, Hugo, so let's bring Hugo in. A couple of minutes later, and we might as well also put the power in and to see if he can get a goal. Should it be, I don't know, who should, maybe, nah, you know what? Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should just get Vilhag out instead because condition is always going to be a problem. And let's wait for the last up. 84 minutes in, they actually are attacking us now somehow. I'm not sure what they changed. I just changed it to defensive and uh, that usually makes it happen because we got some pretty good defensive players so it should be okay. We should probably just want some fresh legs in there, probably in the midfield if we could. We do have Gonzalez. I don't think he can play that role. 
Nah, I don't, I don't trust that. I don't trust that, so probably not. Maybe just Pinguin her for Gonzalez instead. Just fresh legs in the midfield is probably gonna be good. I mean, the midfield, right midfielder. So, yeah, that's about it. And there we are. Full time, 4-0. They did actually have a offside goal, so they did manage to get at least one highlight, but it was offside, so... I, I'm i surprised how well that went. Maybe we just tactically got it spot on because we shouldn't be scoring four goals here on 2.18 XG. Uh, very, I mean, incredible happy here. Uh, okay, nothing to complain about. Play of the match, uh, Jürgensen, obviously. Very good game by him. So uh, yeah, I'm still a little bit flabbergasted about how good the last five games we had is uh, after I changed a couple of things in the tactic and a couple of the player roles uh, or the instructions on the player roles. Just so much better. So apparently I didn't have it right from the get-go uh, early in the season because this one seems to be the one to go for or the way we're doing it now seems to be the one to go for. So a small update on the whole contract thing. Pretty much everyone have signed a new contract, except from Hugo, Gonzalez and Hopfer. They are still considering. I do hope, I really hope that Hopfer is uh, gonna take it, but there is interest in, in, in him. Uh, but I, I would sell him for 1 million. I, I would definitely sell him if someone were to go in on 1 million bid, but I doubt that's gonna happen. I think he's just gonna sign the new contract after we have played our game, to be honest. But yeah, pretty much everyone else signed the new contract, so I'm very happy with that. And it looks like that maybe Regis is getting getting sold for around 100k. So he's basically uh, he's basically um, the one that is gonna be uh, the guy that is paying for all of these wages. <laughs> so that's good. If he's getting sold, that is. Alrighty, so I guess we're gonna start on this screen, actually. Um, the next opponent is this, our parent club. Yep, we are at home. We are at home against them today, and uh, they are playing fluid counter-attacking football. Let's check out their scout report. They're probably gonna play a 4-3-3, which seems to be not the worst thing in the world to play against, but these guys could be completely different setup than the last, yeah. The last team was, uh, I don't know what they were up to, but look at all these positives or strengths. That is a massive amount of strengths. This team is good, right? They, they <laughs> This team is very, very good. At least they got a couple of weaknesses. Goal against uh, from crosses. Okay, uh, that's, that's kind of interesting. So we might want to play a little bit more wide than we would normally do, but let's check up on a couple of other things here. So with the ball, they're kind of setting up this way. That's very strange with three midfielders right here in the central. There's going to be a lot of space in there when we do manage to get the ball off them to counter into this area in the midfield. So I don't think we actually need to be wide. Uh, well, it depends on how they're setting up without the ball. Also very wide or look at all, all the space our inverted wing bag is going to have in here. That's going to be helpful. Um, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, our inverted wing back is not gonna have a good time over here in this area, but with the wing back overlapping, that might be fine then, because we're kind of getting some of these in here, and then the wing back is gonna overlap. But I'm more interested in this over here, all this space that they are leaving on their on their left hand side and our right hand side. That could be something to exploit. So I was kind of sitting here thinking how we could kind of exploit that um, against these guys, but I think we might already are exploiting that kind of situation. We got the Volante who is actually going up there. He got the uh, move into channels, which is that channel right there. So that should be fine. And the inverted wing bag is gonna pop up here, right? So I think we're already taking advantage of that. Also with us underlapping this area, that is the wing winger who is gonna get underlapped by the Volante. So I think we are taking advantage of what we can in that area. Um, so I think we don't really want to change anything for this kind of match, except from maybe just some of the... I don't know who we're going to play. Let's figure out who we're going to play, actually. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the same 11. It's going to be the exact same 11. Just the bench is a little bit changed, but that's about it. I Yeah, I think, I think it's just... It would be stupid to change the same uh, the, the, the 11 here. They're doing really well in there. So let's just start with that again. Um, it seems to be working fine in the last match. And yeah, exactly the same ta tactic as well from the last match. And let's just see how it goes. We are actually on call shift, right? I'm, I'm actually the balance mentality. is not something I've used in the last... Well, maybe I have used it in the last five games. But we are definitely... If we keep going this way... It's gonna be more cautious than it's gonna be balanced mentality that we would have used. But yeah, we'll see about that at the end of the season. But right now, cautious. 
Well, let's get in there and see how it goes. Okay, so 20 minutes in and this has so far been a little bit of a strange game. We just had an offside goal, which didn't count, unfortunately, for Tim Nuclear. We also have an injury, Pinto, in the same move. Pinto got injured, so we definitely need to take him off. And I also feel like there is something that isn't really working. Let's take a look over here in the analyzer and see what we can see. We are uh, average position with the ball, very wide. And they are fairly narrow or just normal, I would say. We are fairly narrow when we are defending, which is fine. And they are, so what is going on here? There is so much space over here on the right hand. Oh, that is our left hand side, that is over here. We probably need our wing back further up or maybe the inverted wing back to I think I think we need our inverted wing back to be further over as well. Yeah, from what I'm seeing here, because there is actually not that much space over here. It's it's the opposite of what it was in the last game. So we probably want the inverted winger to be way further over. That's probably the case. We want him to not sit narrow, but actually wide against these guys, because there's going to be space over here. And then we want to switch side. We want to hit early crosses to get it over to him. Probably. I think we hit early crosses might be good here because we can't really penetrate here and we do get down here So we could uh, you know er hit an early cross over to our inverted winger who's gonna be sitting over all the wing back I think that's it. Let's go into the tactic and subs here. Let's take a look. Well first off Pinto He is in need of coming off. Yeah, I guess I guess Otavio Enrique is coming in and we're gonna switch up Marcelino and Enrique. There we go. So Enrique is gonna be the volante. So tactic here so what I'm thinking is hitting early cross. Yeah, I think hitting early cross might be good here. I guess mixed crosses might be the deal here. Um, and inverted winger, I think I want to have him sit wide, right? I want him to sit a little bit wider in position because that would leave... Uh, maybe I want my inverted wing back to actually cross a little bit more often. Can I, can I do that with him? No, cross less often. I guess the volante will cross it over, or the winger would cross it over, so it's actually fine. But he's actually crossing from byline. I think I'm going to take that one out. Crossing from byline is probably not going to be that helpful in this situation right now. I kind of, I kind of want to get that going while we are kind of, you know, spreading them out even more. Because that would also, if they are trying to mark our inverted winger, that would just leave space in the midfield for our defensive midfielder and volante, or the pressing forward dropping deep. So I, I'm trying to figure out what we could do here to maybe open them up a little bit without being too... Without us being less defensive. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that's about it for the 20 minute mark here. Alright, so 33 minutes in and things are not really kicking off yet. We had one highlight and they had two highlights, all of them set pieces. And here's the thing, we just get more and more possession here. We don't really like possession, but I guess... We'll try and build into it. Let's go positive, actually, because if, if they're giving us the possession, we might as well try and do something with it. So we're going to play in a higher tempo and see if we can beat it with a higher tempo. Uh, hopefully we can play through it, because if they do get the ball and just counter us, they might score a goal here. But I'm trying with what they're giving us here, because they want to play the same way as we do. Um, so that's the problem. They're not as high up the pitch as we are. They're not a high pressure build. They're just sitting deep waiting for us to make a mistake and then they counter us. But apparently with us being uncautious and having the ball, it doesn't really help our situation being a little bit slower in tempo. So we want to up the tempo and see if we can penetrate. All right, so that's half time. And I don't think that was the right choice from what I was seeing. Um, I think we are actually going back. I think, you know, what we are going to do is let them, we're going to try and let them completely take control of the game here. Yeah. I think we, we're actually going away from hit early crosses, and I think we're also just doing low crosses. We, we I actually want to try and run at them instead. I think I want to try and run at them and see what happens. Play a set pieces? Nah. I think we want to try and run at them. Is there anything else here? No, I think that's it. I think that's it, because it didn't really work what I was seeing here. Uh, going positive, we, we, we can't play through them. We can't. We are not good enough on the ball to play through them like that. We are just not that kind of team. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's it. Just a small adjustment here. Um, let's see. Maybe I want to. I kind of want to run. run, run uh, yeah, I want him to run wide and then cross from byline here and inverted wing. I still want him to sit wide. I think I still want him to sit wide, stay wider on the inverted winger, and then the, the wing back come and and and, and yeah, overlap. All right, just small adjustments. Let's go. All right, so 50 minutes in and things are definitely not looking better. They have all the match momentum. What I do think and also what we need to do is we have another injury here. So we do need to make a sub here. Hugo is coming in. And what I'm thinking is actually just loading our old or the tactic here. 
Uh, where is it? For uh, 20... I can't find it. I called it something new, didn't I? Maybe I can load it from here instead. Oh, did I actually... I don't think I've actually saved all the new things. But yeah, I, I think we'll go... Actually, let's go balanced. And uh, what can we do here? What can we do here? Let's think about this for a second again. Because it doesn't... Anything we are trying to do here doesn't seem to be working. Let's go, let's go down to standard. And let's go to uh, attacking with uh, standard as well. And let's just not on the lap here. Well, actually, yeah, there wasn't really room over there anyway. Let's just do that and maybe take out runner defense because that didn't seem to be working at all. Like, at all. So uh, let's just do that. Maybe play for set pieces. Also because play, playing for set pieces also means that we can push our, you know, our central defenders further up when we do get set pieces. It's probably going to be easier for us to keep control a little bit easier that way. But yeah, I don't like what I'm seeing so far. It's not a good game. Um, should we make another sub here right away? So we have one left because right now we are making three subs later on rather than two subs later on. Yeah. Um, but Hawk, is there like anything that we could put? Maybe the Paula would be a good one for this one, actually. Uh, Tangilia, he's only yellow and... Oh, do I keep him on? Yeah, I think I think I'm I think I'm going to keep Jorgensen on and take uh, Tanguilla off. And I'm probably going to move them around, actually. No, I'm going to I'm going to use the Paula as the uh, advance forward here. Nah, and then again, he's not very quick. You know what? All of that, all of that, yeah, all of that, out of it. I, I think, I think it's actually gonna be Jurgensen because I think Tanguilla is the one to run in behind them right now. He's the one to run in behind. He is fairly good at that. So I think the polar as the pressing forward here. Yeah, let's try that. 78 minutes and we are definitely playing better now. But I also think we need to make the last two subs because Velhak here, he's pretty much done for. Penguinhar also, he's getting there on, on a yellow as well. So let's make... Uh, whoops, that that is not what I wanted to do. Ah, no, you... I hate that. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, because if you're going above 80 minutes in the game, you don't get the average rating and stuff on your players. So I, I tend to want to do at least most of my subs before that. And maybe only have one left. But in this case, we're going to make both of them. So we'll hug out for if I do. Which is probably also a better player going forward than will hug is. Penguin her or Mussolino. I don't think we have a midfielder with us, do we? No, not really. Well, Saldo. I don't think Saldo should be playing down there. No, not really. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna put Saldo on for Penguin her instead and just let Mussolino play that. Um, he's nervous, which is never good to see. But I think it is what it is. If we take a draw here, it's not the worst draw in the world. I just don't want to lose it. Um, and right now it's a very it's been a very even game with them probably being a little bit better than us. What what's one stoppage, two subs left? No, we have made all the subs here. So what, we had one stoppage, yeah. That's why that's why we're making two subs now. So yeah, there it is. Hopefully we can at least find one or good two good opportunities here near the end and maybe get a goal. No, it ended nil-nil. Well, both both teams had their chances to score in this game, especially near the end here. Uh, that was I mean, this was not a boring nil-nil. There was a lot of things going on. We have 1.91 in XG. That's saying a lot, but not clinical at all. Only two on target. We had so many big chances. It's uh, unfortunate we didn't get a goal here. I think we. I think tactically, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell how. Um, I mean, we had four clear cut chances. If you have four clear cut chances and don't take them, then it's not tactical. Then it's just the players not getting it over the line. Basically, I don't. I, don't, I think. I think the changes we did at the end like going to balanced on those kinds of things that was the right choice i just it, i couldn't figure it out i just it was really hard to figure out what to do against these guys but at least we got to the point where we actually you know were the better team in the end right we got to the right tactic at the end and uh, but we just didn't get the points we wanted here but i mean it's it's not a it's not bad i mean a draw is not bad here it's, it's still fine it's still okay i mean they have way better players than us if we're taking a look at like this guy I mean, it's just, you know, they just have better players all over the pitch. Just straight up, just better players. Uh, even on the bench. They, it's, um, yeah, it's not even it's not even remotely close to our, ours. Uh, they definitely are a level above us in terms of player quality. So getting a result against these types of guys is good. It's fine. It's okay. So yeah, there we go. So with those two results in, that is putting us at eighth spot with 20 points. I am actually, compared to where I was a couple of like 10 games ago, I am very happy about where we are now. Or maybe not 10, but six games ago. 
But with 14 games in, 20 points, it's, it's okay. Um, I'm a little bit disconcerted that we didn't score against someone like this here who has minus 12 in goal difference. But, you know, we had our XG. It's just about the players not putting it over the line. It's really, really annoying when that happens. But yeah, I mean, it, it, the same thing happened to them. They didn't really score on their chances either, so... Anyway, um, I think that is, uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. Now, I, I actually, I, I kind of wanted to get back when uh, we were in the transfer window, but I think that's going to be next time. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm actually going to play that many games this time around. I'm probably going to come back like at the end of the transfer window, like around end of or start of February here. So I'm only going to play like five, six games uh, and then make another episode here and then make another one down here or something like that. Uh, because we do have quite a few transfers coming in and I kind of want to go through them and I kind of want to show you guys who it is and I guess four or five episodes per season is kind of fine I'm, I'm okay with that so yeah I hope you uh, let's let's end it over here let's end it over here there we go so this is the screen for of this new skin on this one actually better this is also better than the other one isn't it you get more information on this screen don't you yeah, 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 yeah. You got the legends and the icons and the finances, the key people, the honorees. We have we haven't won a title yet, unfortunately, or a cup or anything. Fifty three percent win radio for us. That's not bad. That's not that's not bad at all, actually. But yeah, there we go, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it, and yeah, I will see you around next time.